bought this winch in 2015. It's a Smitty Belt XRC 9000. Uh, 95, 9, 9500. It's a 9500 pound winch. It has uh, served me well. It's uh, used quite a bit. Got me out of a lot of jams. Uh, it's holding up okay, I guess, for the price. I mean, I got this a deal. It was like $150 on a grand opening of a four four by four parts store. So uh, the only thing that I've had is problem is I had to remove this uh, the plug and uh, because it broke, the original one broke. This is the original one. I don't know if you can see, but one of the pins, one of the pins uh, corroded and broke out, and they're very little, so they're not very sturdy. So what I'm going to do is I ordered a new one from Amazon. I'm going to replace this piece here, but we're also going to wire up a um, a permanent switch in the cab right here. Very simple. You just take. Take these off, and this comes off. Here's the new one. Comes with a couple of screws. Looks just like the other one. Okay, Amazon. It's forty dollars, <clears throat> thirty-nine ninety-nine. Way too expensive for what you get. Uh, you know, you could probably, if I had to do it over again, I'd probably just get a uh, a, uh, a trolling motor connector that had, because uh, it only uses three wires, and, uh, and and use a trolling motor connector and just rewire the whole thing. And if it ever happens again, that's what I'm going to do. This thing, I bought it in 2015, so it's four years old. And uh, I took all precautions, dielectric grease and everything. And... Uh, it still didn't last. So, winch is good, but the connector is bad, and you're only as good as the connector. So, what's going to solve this is my in cab winch device I'm going to do eventually. And then, even if this breaks, I'll still have a way to winch myself out. All right, I've replaced this. This was bad, but I ordered this switch from eBay and I connected the old connector to it. So, we're going to see if this works if it does i'm going to install it in the cab i'm sure i'm sure it will all right let's try it out works in all right works perfectly and what i'm going to attempt to do is i ordered this uh heavy duty three conductor uh waterproof connector from uh online led store from ebay and I'm going to splice it in under the solenoid cover here. So when I put the solenoid cover back on, I will have the ability to use the external pendant, which will go right here for the factory. And then there will be a wiring harness that connects it to this switch up into the cab. So I can use the end cab also. All right. Okay, I'm fabricating the inside of this box. I'll let you take a look at it when I'm done. Harbor Freight cordless soldering iron and heat shrink tuber thingy works good. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but I just used the parts I had laying around the house. What I did was I used these little uh, bus bars to join them together. Um, you know, anytime you're making a three-way splice, it's kind of hard to get it uh, neat and organized. I may have left a lot of wires. i got to put all this, attach these to the case and hopefully neaten it up a little bit. All right, so this is the finished product inside the solenoid cover. As you can see, it's got a real clean look. 
coming out. This would be the back of it. This is where my new wiring grommet and connector are. I'm just going to go into my in cab switch. In here, the factory plug, which I would have changed that if I had thought through it, because <clears throat> that this little plug was like forty dollars, not worth it. You can put a three prong boat um, trolling motor plug that's a lot more heavy duty for like fifteen dollars, and it would have lasted me the life of the vehicle. But anyway. If that goes out, I'm going to replace that. I'm almost tempted to do it now, but anyhow, this pigtail that I made is going to connect to the um, to the original solenoid. So you, when you when it's all said and done, the winch will be able to run from in the cab, from the fact or from the factory uh, plug. So. Um, a nice clean look I'm going to take some silicone and put around uh, in the interior of here to keep it waterproof and uh, these little bus panels I'm going to paint the screws with this stuff as soon as um, I make sure everything works again I think it's much more heavy-duty than what I've had because I mean this is chinchy on this Smitty built um, a winch. I'm not sure how a worn or anything else is made, but what I've put in here is pretty heavy duty and uh, you know, so that should work fine. Okay, here's the factory controller plugged into the factory hole, going into the factory harness on the solenoid here. Works good. This plug is going to go into the cab. It's going to route up through here for my internal switch. So you'll be able to use either one of them at the same time. What I've decided to do on my electrical connections in here, instead of painting the electric, liquid electrical tape, I'm going to use this battery terminal protector. It says, resist corrosion on battery terminals, protects electrical connections. So that's what we're going to do. And that should keep them waterproof, water resistant, much better than the factory. Put a little silicone on the uh, internally here. Keep it waterproof. So you don't make the same so you don't make the same mistake that I did. These when I went to put this on go right where the two main positive and negative. So that's going to short out, but there's plenty of room on this side. So I'm going to have to relocate these to this side, the side that has the factory plug. Even though it looks like there's a lot, of, a lot of room right there, you can't because the solenoid fits up in there. So it's got to go on this side. Man, that was a pain. Don't make the same mistake that I did. The, the, the same mistake that I did. I had to take it off of here, put it over here on the side with the uh, with the factory connector, had to uh, silicone my holes back up, put new holes on this side. It's still gonna make for a clean install though. You won't see any of that. Okay, this is the finished product for this, made for a clean install. That's my pigtail that's gonna go to my inside wiring harness. So, um, anyway. While I'm adding this winch uh, switch, I'm going to put a voltmeter and I'm going to stick it right there. Drill a hole with that in here, stick it right here. If you don't like drilling holes in your Jeep parts, don't worry about it. I mean, you can buy these parts cheap. These uh, multi step harbor freight bits work well to drill holes, as you see. Works perfect. All right, got my hole drilled. This will go right in there like that. Switch panel goes right like that. When I put my winch 
switch up here with all the other light switches. You don't want to accidentally hit the winch switch in and out. Uh, it'll mess your winch up because it's probably already tied to one of the tow hooks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this waterproof on off switch and I'm going to, I made a little template here, I'm going to mount it right here. So in order for the winch switch to be active, you would have to flip this on. It will be illuminated and then you can do your winch switch. So most places uh, online will tell you to make sure you have another switch uh, beside your in and out switch to make sure that it's off. This is big and illuminated. It's going to be right here and hopefully I can drill into that and make it look decent. By the way, these switches are normally like $9. I've got a bunch of them. They were, di uh, I think they were um, on clearance at AutoZone for like 99 cents, but they're waterproof, heavy duty. I really like them. To mount this switch, I started by drilling four holes. I'm gonna put this special bit. This bit cuts sideways, so it'll allow you to cut this way and this way and this way. It's for a Dremel tool, but I'm gonna use it in a drill. Well, I got a big hole in my dash. I'm not going to show you the wiring diagram for all this. If you, you know, I like this kind of stuff, but if you're not, uh, if you don't like this, then don't attempt it. Uh, how many of you have ever been in this predicament? Wires everywhere. It'll never go back together, right? All right, my uh, winch safety switch has been mounted. You can see, very nice. This switch has to be on before you can operate this winch in and out switch. That's the, in case you're fiddling with these light switches at night, you don't want to accidentally hit that. It's not going to do anything. But if I turn that on, it'll do it. Now my inside's done. I've got to put that plug on this end. This was just my testing. So I'm going to neaten this up, put an inline fuse in the power supply on this, and I should be done. Good old Radio Shack. All right, this is a finished product. I've got my winch safety switch down here. And what I did was I added a winch in-out button to the Apollo Intech, Apollo Intech switch pod. I have another video on that. And so you can go in and out with your winch, but this must be on to do that. Again, that prevents you from accidentally hitting one of those buttons. They light up. I even added a little voltmeter while I was at it. I think I told you all that. Start it up and see what happens with the voltage. Should kick in. There it goes. It's a good, good thing to have because the gauges on this model do not have any, any voltage. Uh, there's only a battery light that would come on if something happens. See, I'm charging at 14.2 volts now. Turned out to be a pretty clean install, if I say so myself. And then, outside, you can hook up your regular pendant that comes with your winch but I added this heavy-duty plug and that goes inside to the uh, to the winch controllers wraps up here put a fuse goes back around there man look at that mess so anyway turns out good but <clears throat> if I had to do it over again I would not have bought a new factory plug. I would have put a three prong uh, heavy duty like a uh, trolling motor plug because 
actually only three of those five plugs are being used, believe it or not. Hope this helps.